It's Tuesday morning, we're back on site. We're gonna finish the siding today and Jamie's gonna show us how he's installing this trim around the girders, which is pretty interesting, so let's check it out. We're here on the front porch. We're gonna install a piece of trim to cover up this beam or girder, we call it. Now, the only purpose of this trim is like aesthetics. Like we could paint or stain this and it would be just fine. It will look a little nicer with the trim. The trim does serve a purpose of covering the gap where the soffit material doesn't quite reach the framing. Now we have to cover that with something so we may as well just do this larger piece. Time to get the length on this piece here and I am gonna cut it about an eighth inch short of what it actually measures. So it's dead on 71. I'm gonna cut it short so that I have room to wiggle this corner around. I'll use a scrap block with a 45 cut on the outside of this so I can fit up the corner. The end of the piece is buried into the siding at least 3 eighths of an inch, so it really doesn't matter if I cut it short. And I would really be upset if I cut it too long and I had to bring it back down and cut it again, so there's really no point in that. What's your rip number on this? Eight and five eighths. Eight and five eighths, all right. You know, if you're feeling dissatisfied in mm -hmm. any way, buy a hand plane. <laughs> and you'll find that immediately, if you use it, your satisfaction levels will go up. Interesting. You'll probably be happier than you were before you had I the, feel great right now. Before you had the plane and before you used it. <laughs> I think that's it right there. Just like Jamie was doing that mitered corner down there, I'm also installing these pieces with both pieces that are gonna meet together at the same time. So I can slide them back and forth and make sure that everything flushes out. Right there looks good. I'm gonna tack this one. Fit it up where they're overlapping like shingles. Everything should run down and out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and lay some Lexel underneath all of that just to kind of give us some double insurance that everything is sealed and stuck together permanently. We don't wanna leak up here. Oh yeah. That's probably it. That'll flip down. Yep, that's what I'm looking for. Are you good with that? Arlo, where's my board? <laughs> <laughs> Last bit on top here. I'm gonna have it lapping over that and lapping over that. And right there, I'd say is the weak spot. So I'm gonna lay it to it until so it squeezes out. I love it. We are getting prepped with the paint color here and the homeowner picked the paint color, got us a sample. Jamie went and got like 10 gallons of it made and we started putting some of this on and realized maybe it's not exactly the same color. So now we're diving deeper. We've got one whole piece with the original paint color <laughs> right here and one piece with the paint we got right here. And I don't know if you can tell on camera, but this one looks way more purplier, pur purplier. And so I think we're gonna have to redo this. Um, that's not the same color. What are you gonna do about this paint? <clears throat> I'm gonna go see if I can reason with the person at the paint desk, I guess. <laughs> There's two different colors. So the question is, which one is correct? Oh, the sample could have been the incorrect tint. What if it was? But they make samples so that you can make a decision on what color to pick. Right. So if the sample was quite misleading, <laughs> then who's to blame? I don't know. You know, because they might make the paint again and it'd be exactly the same. Hmm. 
if they won't refund it or if this is the true color that she picked and it's purple and if the house requires two coats of paint then mm. we paint it purple first because that paint was three hundred dollars or something per five mm -hmm. so we're in six hundred bucks mm. on paint and then she picks another similar color that is more blue for the final coat. I can't stress how important it is to me that this line above the flashing is a really good looking straight line with a consistent gap. And that's why we draw a pencil line there so that we don't have to wonder if it's good or not. And you know, there's no really great place to cite this. Like Looks as, like you're citing it fine from if, where you are right now. If we messed it up is what <laughs> I'm saying. It wouldn't be that bad, but I would know that it was bad and that would bother me. Let's see, do 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 do. Top line is good. Good. Angle looks good. Roof line is good. Angle is good. Shoot it. I want to show you how Arlo is using this framing square to make the lines that will represent the cut that goes against this 812 roof up top there. What we want to get is the inverse of an 812 because it's not a top cut. It's laying against the top of the roof. So this is essentially double an 812. It's a 24 16, which is double an 812. So all we have to do is line up the corners of the outside here, corner, corner, strike that line right there. And that's our cut and that'll lay perfectly against that 812 roof up top. Today's video is brought to you by another YouTube channel about construction called Homeful. It's new and it features one of my heroes of the construction world, Mike Holmes, and all of the Holmes series. He did all these series where he helped people out by fixing these major problems in their houses that they didn't know they had when they bought them. And now all of those series are together in one place where you can watch them for free streaming on Homeful. If you enjoy our content, you might really love his as well. And it's not a competition on YouTube, luckily. I think the more construction stuff there is on the platform, the better. Like, the better it is for all of us. And I've learned a ton personally because he dives into details and I've learned things about inspections and codes and other sorts of trades that I don't do that I would have never known. So if you're into building and construction like I am, do yourself a favor and check out Homeful. There's a link down in our video description, and if you click that link to go there and get subscribed, Mike will know that we sent you his way, which he will appreciate. And I'd love to get Mike down on our channel one day, so hopefully that can happen. You gonna catch both of these? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah! Good catch, Gilligan. <laughs> <laughs> it's Wednesday morning. We're back on site. And today we're going to paint this place. We've got five guys, three paint sprayers. We're going to use those to just apply the paint to the wall and then brush it out. And we're going to use the purpley kind of paint color that we ended up with because it's really close to the paint chip. And we're going to see what happens. But I think this is going to be amazing. Lee fast. B-Y-O-P-S, bring your own paint sprayer day. Let's see if it actually pumps. This room's been sitting a little while. You guys look like you're set up. Double barrel. Yeah. Literally two spray guns into one paint bucket. Never seen that before. So the name of the game here is don't spray at anything. Like spray away from all windows, away from foundation, away from soffit, brush it out. I'm sure there's, you know, Ray, I tell you one thing, my arm is gonna be well, falling so off by the end of the day. <laughs> How we've done like, I don't know, not a whole lot and my arm is feeling it. Yeah. So, maybe I'm gonna have to go lefty here. So, oh, that's probably gonna be the move. Switch back for it? Yeah, I mean, seriously. Doesn't sound like much, but it's like running a marathon with a paintbrush. This paint is covering amazingly well. Sorry, did I, did I just take your job without really asking you? Uh, you kind of told me, but you're the boss, so you get to tell me that sort of All thing. All right, anyways. I'll keep doing it. I'm happy now. I wasn't as happy with the brush in my hand. <laughs> I mean, I knew this was going to happen. Oh, did you? I, yeah. I didn't. I thought I was going to keep brushing. I really thought I was going to brush. <laughs> Man, I, you, I tricked myself. <laughs> Jason and Jono are on the detailed team getting around stuff like the beams, the windows, around this edge of the roof where it's kind of tight up to the soffit. 
I understand Jono being on this team. I don't understand Jason being on this team. Uh, Why did I get this brush, Bob? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, I don't Jamie like... It's like, Jamie, bring all your AT, A18 brushes tomorrow. But, um, yeah, I got one that looks more like my hair in the front. <laughs> Just checking out Ray's paint sprayer here. I'm not sure that's how it's supposed to sit while you're using it, but it's going. Oh, it's and it sounds real happy about it. it Hit it, Jamie. Huh? Hit that thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Cutting in here to this soffit and on this texture, it's just terrible, but I'm getting a little paint on the wall, taking it up there and like, just like grinding it into the texture is taking way longer than the other side. I'm tempted to get that spray guard and just stick it in the corner and I mean, Better you than me. I'd be done already. It, I don't, it might be all over the soffits, but what do you think of the color from down there? I think it actually looks good. It's, it's not screaming purple as much as I thought it no. was. It's really... It looks blue. It's like moving an octopus. Every time we got to move this thing, it's got tentacles coming off everywhere. Hoses, cables, it messy. Com it comes unplugged every time we forget. <laughs> and we get up there and then it's not spraying. We're like, dang. Dang. You look like you can barely walk right now. <laughs> These things are heavy. They are heavy. The key is to carry two, so you're weighted evenly. Yeah, this is our last one now. Jay's getting eagle eye on this thing, making sure his line is cut laser straight. I like this method. I mean, this is how you know it's straight. You're looking right at it. Hey, I did some math for the homeowner, uh -oh. just Why? in case she's watching. So we painted that side in 35 minutes with three guys. I'm not really getting paid, but if I was, say we're billing at $35 an hour to cover workman's comp and stuff. So at $35 an hour, three guys, 35 minutes, $63 no for the whole side of the house. That's the world's best deal in paint. We better slow down. That's all I can say. <laughs> wow. Could wear that like a <laughs> scarf. I just put it on the wall. <laughs> Perfect. We got this section done real thick. <laughs> Super thick here. That's paint he pulled off the shield. No. Yeah. yeah. Oh, crap. <laughs> I don't want to sound like a sissy, but I don't have no idea how you're laying on this scorching Dude, hot roof right now. I don't now. know, but my, you know what, are sizzling <laughs> like eggs on a frying pan. white trim here now and we got one bucket between the two of us so we're just hanging out real close together looks kind of weird i'm rolling the bulk of it and i'm cutting in a little bit with this thing like that top edge boom and then ray's coming behind me cutting with a brush drinking a lacroix it is hot it's about 80 degrees here which is hot for here we are wrapping it up here and jamie just got back from cleaning the paint sprayers <laughs> 
I would rather paint this house again than have to clean the paint sprayers. I mean, Dude, what I was to you? totally clean when I left here. Look at his arm. And <laughs> I'm telling you what, man, I got it all down in my fingers. Look at this. Oh, oh my God. man, my phone gonna have a finger malfunction on account of this. Any, I don't know what it is about cleaning them. I just hate it so bad. I mean, I'm trying to clean the tips, and the, you know what happened is this is what happened. I put the tip back on because I always blast the water through the tip to clear out the little yeah. orifice, right? And the rubber gasket had fallen out, and didn't I didn't know, know it. it. So I just screwed Dude. the thing back on there. You pull the trigger. <laughs> It just explodes all over you, right? There's nothing oh you can do. Gosh. By the time you find out, too late. Anyway, it's just, it's just awful. I know. It's I know. awful. Well, we're about wrapped on two coats. I just wanted to show you what I've been dealing with here. This is okay. the paintbrush you left me. Oh man, that's my favorite staining brush. I know, it's not even a paintbrush and it's um. a total piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, definitely... I've been cutting in all these windows, two coats with that. That's awesome. Yo. So I think we should go home now. What yeah. is this? Well, it's because look, it was dribbling all off the sides everywhere. You know, See that? Dribbling is good in basketball, but when it comes you to go. your <laughs> trim edging. So I got I to gotta get a few sprockles right there. Done. I'd rather paint. The, I'd rather clean the paint spray than do what I just did. I was on the phone for an hour with Mopar, yeah, roadside oh. assistance, trying to get my wife's brand new Jeep towed in. I'd rather freaking have Ray kick me. Mm, don't buy a Jeep. In all seriousness, though, this was probably the fastest we've ever painted an entire house, like the body color and the trim, and it covered really well in one coat, which is amazing. That doesn't really ever happen. So we're pretty pumped about that. Uh, I think having all the scaffolding set up, all of the caulking done, and then like five of us out here doing it is why it went so fast. So I thought this would take like two or three days, done in a day. Thank you, Jay. Hey, did anybody pick up my saw yesterday? Yeah, I, I left it in the back of my truck. Set. Just pull the trigger, Arlo. Not the trigger. <laughs> Get up on there and pull it and freaking wing your own. There you go. It is Thursday morning, aka Friday, if you're on the Perkins crew. And we're gonna get going with some porch ceilings. Jamie's gonna do the drip edge because he doesn't trust anybody. And Arlo's back. Where were you yesterday, Arlo? Yeah, Arlo, where, where were you yeah, yesterday? Arlo. I had a cat litter box to change and <laughs> blah 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 blah. <laughs> One of the main reasons I wanted to go ahead and install this drip edge myself, even though I would say it's the roofer's job, is that it's going to be a while before we put the shingles on because I want to get the plumbing done so that the plumbing vents are cut through the roof so that nobody comes up here to cut a hole in the finished roof to install a plumbing vent in a boot. Now in the meantime, if it rains, water's just running down our finished fascia, which is completely painted and done. And if it's exposed with running water like a waterfall down it for a couple of weeks, I think it could potentially, you know, make it uh, kind of streaky from the dirt from our feet up on this roof and we might have to repaint it again. And I don't want to do that. So I think it's easier to put the drip edge on myself and zip tape the top edge of the drip edge so the water will actually clear the fascia and not run water down it. One critical part to a good installation of this drip edge is nailing it in the right place. And you can see how Jamie's nailing it up in the top inch and a half. And that's the part that's gonna hit something below. If you nail out here, it's just a hollow void below because this sticks off, you know, that much. Uh, you can also get nails that fire through and then you know shoot out the bottom and you see them under there. We've seen that as well. So I think that's part of the reason Jamie wanted to do this himself. Is that right? Yep, you got it. How your quads feeling? Awful. <laughs> Dude, I can't even tell you what I'm actually thinking right now. <laughs> not fit for the film. <laughs> Jono is going to kill you. Shut up, dude. <laughs> we said yesterday, Ray and I, we don't, like you and Jamie, 
You don't bother us at all, but dude, when John finds out what happened, we're like, dude, John's gonna kill us, dude. That's all we worry about. Yeah. Is dude, so yeah, that ready. oscillating saw, you're supposed to like. It got away from me, bro. With the blade so dull. It's not supposed to do that. Dude. Yeah, it's not supposed to do that. Oh, that's that Instagram guy. It's not supposed to do that. This ceiling is our LP Smart Side Prime 4x8 Cedar Texture Grain Panels. And they go up nice and quick, paint easy. And that little overlapping bit. Yeah. And now the guys are wrapping the inside of these beams, and I think that's the way to go. Yeah. It looks really good. Seven and fifteen there. Jay, did you know you had that microphone on you the whole time? Yeah, was I swearing? I don't know. Did I say anything bad about my um, wife? I don't know. What, I was somewhere else. Oh, so crap. What, what did I say about Eric? <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Eric is such a <laughs> beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Jono and I are coming behind with the big stretch, finishing up the ceiling here. And we could put battens over this, but I think this is just gonna look really clean once it's caulked and all painted white. If it doesn't, we could always add batten strips after the fact and wouldn't really hurt anything. Jono has a caulk gun that has zero caulk on it, which is nearly impossible if you've ever done this. Wow. And mine, <laughs> I just like, Oh, I, I gotta go this angle here. It's terrible. And so Jono won't let me use his caulk gun. I won't let anybody <laughs> use my caulk gun. I'm gonna do my construction yoga for the day here. Lean over backwards. I actually felt pretty good. Whenever you use, where's your arm, bro? <laughs> there it is. Dude, what are you doing? <laughs> what are that? you doing right now? You blocking all cookies? <gasps> okay. It, uh, oh, oh. Wow. You know it's exactly <laughs> wrong. Thirty-two. Thirty-three about. and seven in the center is what I did. And I did. What about from this side, though? Well, I didn't pull from that side. Oh. I mean, I'm just curious if uh, they, I mean, it seems like they would have put it dead center. Maybe close, 34 and a half. <laughs> maybe close. Hey, your grip edge looks good, Jamie. I was just gonna ask, what's the deal with the little thing in the corner? Isn't it neat? I, I mean, I don't know what to think. <laughs> what is it? Uh, the idea is hopefully it'll make the concentrated amount of water in the valley drip farther out. Cause I really don't want water oh, just running down, just kind of dribbling down okay. at that point. There's a joint there in the fascia that I mm. don't want to get wet. This is why I'm doing okay. all of this. I don't know if it's I just had help. to ask. Uh, there's another one. There's some, there's there's some another one right I there. Do. I was thinking of some more things to do. Yeah. Um, Last trim board going in and I'll say it looks way better. That was a lot of work. But I think the overall finished product is way nicer looking. How's so, it hey, especially once it gets paint. Uh, Gappy, uh, you're good. You're about hammer. an eighth. Eric, give him a hammer. Hammer. Yeah. It's Monday morning. We're back on site, and this will be the last day that we're here before we leave for a while, and the subs get in here and do their thing. One thing we've read in the comments that we're gonna do, don't know if it matters or not, is remove the plastic off of our firewall, which is drywall. And we did this to keep everything dry during framing. And we're gonna see if it kept it dry. There was a lot of concerns that inside this plastic would be nothing but moisture. Right. Uh, looks, uh, let's find out. Looks like, uh, okay. Yo, Jay. Oh, there it is. Ah! <laughs> What's up? What's up? Was there any water? Between the plastic and the drywall. Oh, dude, it's like a dust fart up here. <laughs> dust fart. Where Arlo, are they? Have you found any water in here? No. Okay. It is absolutely dry. It's like probably drier in there than it is out here. <laughs> 
I mean, seriously, it was hermetically sealed. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> that's, the, that's the catchphrase I was looking for, hermetically sealed. That's the back side. The zip tape has more in it. Yeah. Hey Arlo, I got bad news. What's that? We did find one spot of moisture over there just now. Really? Yep. Oh there my gosh. Go. Yep. Right at the bottom, little spot. That's a wrap on our video today and a wrap on the exterior finish of this house, minus the decking, which we're gonna do later so it doesn't get all nasty while we're doing the drywall and painting. Same for the front doors. We'll be back in a few weeks and we'll start the inside finish. Thanks for building with us.